Welcome to the You World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. And welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. Today we're talking with Melissa from Melissa CrossFit Coaching. Melissa is a holistic gut health coach. So, Melissa, tell us all about what you do and how you do it and how you get started and all the important details about what you're doing out there to be the change you want to see in the world. Well, thank you, Jill. Um, I so, as you said, I'm a certified holistic gut health coach. <laughs> What does that mean? That means that we're focusing on healing your gut. My focus is on helping women become their own health advocate, one small change at a time. I don't know about you, but you get to a certain age and you're just like your body's starting to like, what is this? How come I can't lose the weight? How come I'm gaining weight? How come all of a sudden my eyes look like this? What's going on with my hair? I'm 40, 50 years old and I have acne. What? So um, all of that goes down into healing our gut. And so we're also shifting our mindset into a growth mindset, and we have to work on our emotional, Um, especially as women, which is my focus. When you get into your 40s and 50s, there is a whole lot of life that you've lived. If you've had kids, career, relationships. as we all have, then you've gone through a lot of different things and stress. Life is stressful. Well, when you have babies, you have a different kind of stress and it, your body reacts to it. I mean, we all remember when we were sleep deprived with babies, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's a stress and you have to allow your body to recover from that. So with our busy lifestyle, we need to pay attention to our gut. And that is where Western medicine does not do a very good job on it. Unless that doctor has gone, Ooh, there's something going on here. And I need more training. Um, I know I started to see that And I became very interested because it was like, I would go to the doctor who I thought I had a pretty good doctor and, you know, I can't lose the weight. I I'm restricting calories and nothing is happening. I'm, um, I'm a teacher. I'm running around a classroom, (laughs) very highly stressful, toxic position. And, you know, what is going on? And when I would go home and not want to go out with friends or barely be able to do the minimum so that my children could go to their activities, have their friends, et cetera, because I was so exhausted, like what was happening? So that brain fog was part of it. And of course, going through a divorce, um, highly traumatized. There you go. So there's all these things that came together. Um, I learned through that process as going to the doctor and getting, oh, you know, you're just that age. Oh no, you can't be starting menopause as I was going through perimenopause. And oh, that's just what you're gonna have to get used to. Was just like, why? No. So I went on my own journey to try to go and figure out how to help myself. Long story short, COVID proved that I could teach online. um, And I thoroughly and completely enjoyed it. 
why not dive into something else that I have such a passion for and help women with one small change at a time so they're not overwhelmed because we got enough in our life with support to heal their gut. Now, I am um, accredited or I am certified through HWCA, which is a holistic wellness coaching academy accredited mm-hmm. through AADP. Whew. I thought, I thought alphabet soup happened in the education realm. It happens everywhere. It happens everywhere, for sure. Um, And in that, we have what she has developed as a Buddha belly gut protocol. And the more I dive into it and cross-reference, because high education, I cross-reference a whole bunch of stuff. um, It is absolutely a premier gut protocol to heal your gut. Now, We are in the society, we grew up in the 70s, 80s of, oh, you have this, take this pill. Oh, you do this, do this. Um, I know my grandmother and my great aunts had like pill bottles all over. And my thought was, is that really helping? So that is not right. It's not. Our gut is known as our second brain. And I found that fascinating because our gut that is where our immune system is. That is where our food is digested. And it starts with our mouth and goes all the way down through our digestive tract. If you go back to your biology lessons and out the back door, um, all those spots along the way, there can be disruptions, but the most important is your gut. As a woman, Um, finding out that there's certain foods my body doesn't tolerate, like gluten, was life-changing and amazing. Um, Also finding out that there are certain foods, like cauliflower, that is healthy for you, that I can only eat a minimal amount of that, or my body reacts in basically like I've been glutened. So that is something I also help women do is figure out what food does your body love? Because we are all different. And your gut has a biome that is utterly and completely different than your kids, than your husband, than your best friend, than anyone else out there. It's like our fingerprints. So that is very important. As we're starting as women to go through perimenopause, which can happen 10 to 15 years before menopause, everything starts shifting. And you're starting to wonder. I remember I was in a master's class um, for reading and I'm sitting in this very cold air conditioned room, just sitting there listening to the speaker and all of a sudden, like who turned on the furnace and sweat started pouring down. I wasn't even taking notes, like minimal movement. And the lady next to me leaned over and was like, are you okay? You are red. And like, what's happening to my body? Because nobody really talked about it. Um, And that is where- to that is flame on. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) Um, And trying to figure out when I found out that I had a gluten allergy, those symptoms did become reduced. Rain fog went away. Um, my face cleared up, and but I still had that. I felt like I was on an emotional roller coaster. Like things were just like, how come? Who am I? Um, so sidetrack, I ended up with a full hysterectomy because I finally got a young doctor who wasn't yelling at me that they would never do that without uh, extensive therapy. I'm like, I'm done having kids. I'm not having kids. No, any, you know, I'm mid forties, no more children out of this body. <laughs> uh, because I had horrible, horrible cramping and periods and that, which I had been told that after I had children, I would not have any more. Liars. <laughs> Liars, pants on fires. But that was the information they had because not only did men doctors tell me, which after I left and went to college, I pretty much insisted on having female doctors whenever I could. Um, I just felt like 
there was more of a connection there that they understood more like what I would be coming to them about. <laughs> and, but it took a younger OBGYN to sit and listen to me and hear what I had to say and why I was saying it, let alone my medical chart. And she said, you know, okay, it's a lot to think about. It's, it's, it's a heavy decision. I want to give you some time to think about it. Now, as a teacher, I'm planning this kind of surgery during my summer vacation. And I told her, you know how long I've thought about this? And she asked me how long? And I said, since I was 16, knew I had to have it to have babies. I'm done. I don't need it anymore. And at the same time, I was doing the gluten-free, trying to figure that out, which the resources were not like they are now. And, and discovering that there is a health journey that nobody helps women with. So I love doing it. I love helping women and becoming their own health advocate. Maybe you have a doctor that you adore and for the most part is amazing, but they're only doing what they've been taught. Uh, when they go to school, they're learning all these different systems and everything, but what they don't do is nutrition. They get like two weeks. And it's the most, most important yeah. thing that people can learn is how to nourish their body so it can grow and do the basic functions of life. <laughs> exactly. So that is why um, I just, I really want to help. I, I guess we're labeled Gen X or the women right around that because you shouldn't be taking a lot of pills. Um, your second brain, your gut, it, it talks with your brain. Like they have biodirectionality and, and they talk to each other. So if you have brain fog, you've got some issues in your gut. You have acne and you're in your forties and fifties. You have issues with your gut. You know, there was, there's over 80 autoimmune diseases that are connected to your gut and just helping heal. Now, this is what I hear a lot especially from older, but I don't want to change. I like my Twinkies. And I, every time someone talks about a Twinkie, I think of the movie Wally. -E. And I laughed hysterically that my children didn't understand why when there was the Twinkie for the cockroach. Okay. So I understand. I grew up on Twinkies, hi hos, ding dongs. I no longer eat those because I know they're not the best for me. Now, I love chocolate. I have not given up my chocolate. I have gone to a healthier chocolate. Why? Because the cocaia beans are actually full of nutrition and wonderful. But the whole process, which I've done a deep dive on my Instagram of how they've taken the chocolate and they've gotten rid of so much of the nutrients and added so much sugar and that- butter. Yeah, that our taste buds are like, oh, this is what we like. When the sugar dark, and fat, two things yeah. that make you fat. <laughs> exactly. And the sugar disrupts your gut. Totally and completely. You crave it. So it's all a process of eliminating these things slowly. Because who wants to go to the doctor? Who goes to the doctor and they're like, well, you should follow this diet. And you're looking at it going, what? What do I do? And it's kind of a all or nothing. Instead, how about one thing at a time and just focus on one thing at a time. One thing I do, I do for myself too, is I kind of track what I eat. I don't track what I eat to go, oh, I had a quarter cup of this with one teaspoon of this and one tablespoon of that. I don't do, I don't have time for that. That to me is like, nope, don't want anything to do with that. But instead, um, I had one burger. Of course, I cut it up. I had a side of greens. I had sauteed red peppers, onions, green peppers, yellow peppers. I had sauerkraut because we need our probiotics. Um, I Whatever I put in my burger bowl, I just don't eat my burger with a bun. I put everything else in there. Uh, and then I eat. And I that. like to use mustard and mayo as. <laughs> yep, you can absolutely. Um, sometimes I put, I, I change it up. I just change it up to what I feel like, but there's a basis to it. So what if instead of oh you have this really thick bun, you just took the top, 
bun off and you just did a bottle. Open and then, and then a couple times later, maybe you take the whole bun away because that bun's not doing anything for you except for your taste buds. And so it doesn't is... even do that anymore. <laughs> bread, bread from the store has zero flavor and almost no texture. It, it used to be when I was young that you would get a hamburger and the bun actually supported the stuff in the burger. Mm -hmm. But if you have a bun in a burger, it just like, it falls apart. You're going to eat it with a fork and a knife anyway. Why bother? Why it's, bother? It's extra calories and the gluten and the other chemicals that are actually in the bread to keep it fresh. Bread isn't designed to last three weeks exactly. on a shelf. <laughs> so another deep dive that I have done, I love doing deep dives. It's mm -hmm. the teacher education thing. Um, is about some of the processed foods that we eat. And we are eating ultra processed foods. What does that mean? It's, it's not as close to nature because that's how I finally figured out my gluten-free diet. The closer I ate to nature, the better and easier it was. I didn't have to look at packaging. I didn't have to try to figure out what does this $20 word mean? Um, is it a sugar, which there are over a hundred names for sugar. I find that just dumbfounding. Um, and then, you know, is it a chemical that's made in a factory? Because the industrial revolution had people working and then we're no longer tending and they needed easy things to do. And the food industry grew from that. And now it is the beast that it is. Um, there are top nine allergens that children and adults are allergic to. So if you are eating bread, gluten, and within an hour, your stomach blows up and now you look like you're three, four months pregnant, you probably have got some things, well, you got some things going on in your gut, but you might be allergic to gluten. And part of the gut protocol is that we rest your gut for three days. That doesn't mean that you don't eat for three days. You do but you're only eating one meal. Now it can be a big meal, but it's healthy. There's not the ultra processed foods. And the rest of the time you are drinking your water and tea, or you can have a coffee in the morning, but they, we tend to not want to drink caffeine at that time to just, again, let our system rest. And, uh, then we're also doing bone broth because bone broth has so many good qualities. Um, I add a little bit of pink Himalayan salt to it with MCT oil. So the MCT oil helps to fill and be full. Now, it is amazing how much better you feel after that. And then as you start to introduce food, you just make sure, okay, I'm not eating gluten right now, which is really easy for me. I've taken dairy away because a lot of people's bodies don't like dairy. Now, cow's dairy is, is a whole another podcast, um, but then you have goat and, and some people can do goat milk and cheese better than they can do cows. Um, then and none of it needs to be pasteurized because the pasteurization process takes it all apart and puts it back together. So you have none of the nutrients in there that actually allow your body to digest stuff. Mm -hmm. We do drink, I drank goat's milk for years because I raised goats and I had a dairy farm, a goat dairy. But um, we do do um, cow dairy because we have a local dairy and it's like direct from the cow to the fridge. And it still has all the pieces in it that you need to actually digest it. I'll drink a lot of it. But my husband, he likes milk <laughs> and he doesn't like goats. <laughs> and, you know, if you were raised where you drank milk all the time, like in the 70s, there was the saying you got milk and the milk mustache in the early 80s, right? I have a dairy intolerance. There's so many ways that I found that out. But it's I from was drinking milk that's pasteurized. Right. 
Now, yeah. one of my best friends, her grandparents were the biggest dairy farmers in the area. And one day they had unpasteurized milk and we all tried it. And it was like, it was weird, uh -huh. but it struck me as, wow, what I drink from the store does not taste like that. And then if you go to Europe, I came back and went, I'm not drinking any of this stuff again. So um, that, so it's a process, one thing at a time. But when you rest your gut, you start to heal your gut. But in three days, you're not going to heal it all the way. It took years for you to break your gut and to listen to your body say, I don't feel good. <laughs> Please stop. And for you to be able to go, oh, this is what you've been trying to tell me and start to heal. So it's a process. So on the American diet, we feed our gut and it gets out of whack. So you should have a healthy gut of bacteria, 80% uh, friendly, 20% unfriendly. And you have to have the unfriendly. We, we don't want to kill all the bacteria because the friendly um, needs the unfriendly. It, it, it's like they, they need something name. to practice on. <laughs> there you go, basically. But because of the standard American dial was ultra processed, high sugar, I mean, high, high sugar, um, it's actually flipped. We have 80% bad and 20% good. And this is why we see the rise in chronic diseases, okay? Now, there is an awful lot of terms out there, and one of them is leaky gut, and people, you know, throw it around, and what does that mean? Well, in our intestines, our, our, our lower large intestines, there is a mucus lining membrane, it's real tight, so it keeps the food in there, keeps the bacteria in there, can't get into your bloodstream unless it is absorbed and it's gone through the process that your body designs. Well, when you have a leaky gut, for whatever reason, things start to break apart. And then there's these holes and the food and the bacteria are starting to go into your system, your bloodstream without going through that filter process, the rest of your body back up into the small intestine and it's causing havoc. What and are some signs that people could recognize that this is happening to them? Thank you. So you might, especially in women, as I said, as we're getting to that certain age, you have unexplained weight gain and you're like, I'm eating healthy. What's going on? You have some raging hormones going on. Um, and, and there's a whole different thing that men don't have to worry about that we, as women, we do. Um, you could have some thyroid issues. They're linking a lot of thyroid issues to that. Doesn't mean that you don't have, still need medicine for your thyroid. It's, the point is to kind of reduce brain fog, acne, dental issues. I had bleeding gums until I started to go gluten-free and started cleaning up my diet. And my hygienist was like, what are you doing that's different? And I thought, and I never connected that until this last year as I'm diving into school, like, oh, that's why. So that's something good. Um, maybe your, your hygienist will quit telling you, you need to floss more. <laughs> Constipation, diarrhea. Uh, your mood, again, those hormones, way up, way down. It, it, you know, life is ups and downs, but you wanna have that even keel to be able to respond to things. Um, not being able to handle high stress. It affects your gut. So now they're, they're connected. Bloating, gas, um, nutritional deficiencies. Generally, blood tests only go so far unless you ask them to do deeper. But if you do a stool test, you'll get a lot more out of that. Uh, arthritis and joint pain. Um, like I said before, the autoimmune disease, there's like over 80 identified. And that does include, include things like IBS, eczema, SIBO, which is bacteria in the small intestine and um, can happen after you do like antibiotics. So you have to be careful with that. Um, 
but your Western doctor medicine doesn't always diagnose it as that. And psoriasis, so there is a multiple of different things. And you can't go, oh, my thyroid is just because my gut is leaking. It, it's a combination of different things and starting and, of course, always working with your doctor. What I would do as a gut health specialist, I'm the one that is here encouraging you to talk to your doctor, encouraging you to discuss with your doctor different tests and such. But also, I'm the one that can come into your kitchen with you via Zoom, via Facebook groups to be able to say, here, let's do this. Let's help you make a menu plan for the week where we're just going to focus on how can we add one more serving of vegetables? How can you drink more water as opposed to pop soda? Um, how can you, because we're all individual great. I can't eat a lot of cauliflower. I'm not going to go for a cauliflower pizza, right? So what else can I do instead? So that's the kind of thing. And of course, when you're in a group, like a Facebook group, you've got the support, you've got the uh, other women in there that they get it, they understand, or you're leading the way and, and you're pulling them up with you to be able to say, oh my gosh, this is what I was experiencing. And this is now that I've done this, and this is I'm on the other side of it. Um, brain fog. I believe I said brain fog, you know, and you're just like, I know I should know this and I can't think. That is alleviated. I can always tell when I had too much of something or another because of how my brain reacts. Um, and, and how if I have, I'm starting to get fatigued, although I'm in an area where it's over hundred degrees. So afternoon siestas are just, you know, what you need to do when it's that hot, right? Even though you're in air conditioning. <laughs> um, uh, yesterday I had something I hadn't had in a while. I had a certain type of pizza. Well, it wasn't cauliflower. And within an hour, my gut hurt. I, and it was just like, okay, for whatever reason right now, I can't eat this. My, my body is not reacting to it well. Um, and so just drink a whole bunch of water to help kind of flush that out. Uh, I'm working with a gal who uh, I keep get, trying to get her to go get tested for SIBO, which is an easy breath test. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like, <clears throat> those of us that have had children, when you did the sugar test is basically what they're doing, but you breathe out and it measures. So it's measuring the bacteria in your small intestine, which you're not so really supposed to have. And it's measuring the sugar because it's all supposed to go to the large, it's supposed to pass through and go. Um, so that's how you decide, SIBO's decided. You have um, to take that, that horrible glucose drink. I'm not no, sure I could drink that anymore. <laughs> I, it was so bad. It was, it's horrible. I've been told that it's a different, it's not like that by uh, some people that have, have done that. I'm like, oh good, because man, that was everything to get that down. <laughs> I can't even imagine that it's like a positive thing to do to your body, just taking the test. Dumping all that glucose into your system at one time. Glucose is just sugar. It's just sugar. It's just sugar. Um, I was, <clears throat> I liked when I went to do that for uh, my youngest and I had this array of flavors and I'm like, those aren't even flavors. Nasty. Let's just <laughs> go with regular. And I have, I have some, um, I don't even remember what I had. I had something to chase it to help pull away from the, I drink a lot of water, I always have, but to pull away the flavor, because I knew it was going to be nasty. And then I got heartburn for the first time in my life. So, but if you're having those pains and you've gone through all the other checks to go and say, Hey, I think I have this because then there's a whole protocol that is totally separate to be able to heal from SIBO. And it, it is a serious disease. But like I had said before, each of us have our own individual gut microbiome 
And so we respond to foods differently. So when you go to that doctor and you get that list, it's just a generic thing. When you work with a gut specialist, you you got you you know like okay, you can't eat cauliflower like that. Great. Let's look for something else that your body people says. Can't eat broccoli. Oh, exactly. It's supposed to be a great thing, but it's not a great thing. Nothing is a great thing for everybody. Blanket. Exactly. Exactly. And the doctors, your doctors only doing what they were taught. You know, um, if you're lucky enough to have a doctor that has gone back to uh, get a lot of education on nutrition and looked outside of Western, Western medicine, then that's fabulous. You can go to a functional medicine doctor. Will your insurance pay for it? I don't know, but it's certainly worth the money if you have these things and you just don't figure you're just like ah, there's got to be something to dive deeper but Anymore, why not? you're going to spend the money you're either right. going to hire a coach who's going to walk you through the steps or you're going to keep going to your doctor and he's going to keep telling you the same story that he'll he'll try to find a label for you and maybe he'll have if he can find a label for you then he'll have a protocol of things to give you to mask the symptoms but masking the symptoms does not solve the problem it just allows the problem to get out of control to the point where it's doing so much more damage that it's going to cost you way more money to mask those symptoms than exactly. you would spend by hiring somebody that can shorten the learning curve and get you the results that you're looking for, which is, you know, optimal health for wherever you are in, in the cycle. And so, you, you, I mean, you, Jill, that, Exactly. You absolutely working with someone that can come into your home and, and has a group where there's that support that you can go to daily that can help you figure it out. So it's not necessarily uh, an overwhelming experience is amazing. And you learning how to go to your doctor and say, no, these are the tests I want. I, yeah, great. You tested my thyroid, but did you go deeper? Don't just stop at, oh, we're just testing this. Go deeper. Um, okay, you know, you you did my blood work, but I want these other things within my blood work because every time we've done my blood work up until now, it's the same thing. Oh, you're just a little low on vitamin D. You're a little low on vitamin B. And those those parameters are an average of sick people. Mm-hmm. You know, you're in the normal range. Well, normal range for sick people because 80, at least 80% of the population in the United States is ill. They have some form of chronic disease, whether they acknowledge it or not. And I'm sure that number is actually much higher. But when you get a result from your doctor on a, on a blood test or any kind of test that they do and they say, oh, you're within the normal range, you always have to keep that in the back of your mind. It's not optimal health is not in that range. Optimal health is in a different range, but because the numbers are so skewed because the population is so ill, it's an, it's another reason why you really need somebody who knows what they're talking about and knows who's been trained to look at those tests and say, okay, yeah, it might be in the normal range, but it's not in the op anywhere near the optimal range. You need to do these things. And these are the real foods you need to eat in order to correct this situation, not take this drug to mask the symptoms. Exactly. I get the feeling from this conversation that you're more about helping people listen to their body and, and be able to track the information that their body's telling them in order to help them get optimal results from the foods that they're eating and the decisions that they're making about how they're going to handle different aspects of their lives. Is that? Absolutely. Because you know your body better than anyone else. You've lived in it the longest. You know what you can do. And being having a, a growth mindset is just like, hey, let's try this. Yes, we've been told all our lives, cauliflower and broccoli are good for you. But what if your body's saying, yeah, not us, but you keep eating it because you're told it's good for you. Um, I understand, you know, doctors are there for diseases, but the system has gotten skewed 
And now you need to take control of that, especially as a woman, you need to take control of that because it's your body and don't having somebody else saying, yeah, that doesn't seem quite right. Let's dive into this a little bit. So when you go back to the doctor, you can say, okay, let's chat a little. Um, I think doctors are better at critical care than they are at diagnosing and actually solving chronic disease problems, mostly because they're ignorant about nutrition and the role nutrition plays in your overall health, and, both mighty mind and spirit. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I got diagnosed with type of... Uh, oh, I always want, yes. I always trip up on it if I don't think about it first. But the thing is, I don't have it anymore. And in healing my gut, unbeknownst to me, I took care of that. But that's not what I was told. And it took more than six months of debilitating pain, trying to figure out what it was. And then it was like, oh, yeah, you just have to avoid this. What? I don't want to avoid strawberries. They're my favorite. And so there's just some simple things that sometimes it's like, yeah, that doesn't help somebody. And yet you can heal things. Um, I know one thing, especially in um, Alzheimer's is on the rise. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people have grown up with the thought of once, if you have the gene for Alzheimer's, there's nothing you can do. You're going to get Alzheimer's. It's like diabetes and they call it diabetes three. Yep. That is a, a new term that is coming out is that Alzheimer's is diabetes three. Why are they linking it to that? because it is linked to sugar. We are such a highly sugared from the ultra processed foods society now that Alzheimer's has risen. Um, what, if you have the gene, you have the gene. It doesn't mean you're gonna get it. You have to unlock it and then you can slow the process. Um, I have a grandmother that ended up with dementia. So do I have that gene? I don't know. I refuse to go get tested for it because what will that do? Instead, I prefer to live a healthy lifestyle in order to do what I can to prevent that from happening. And there are so many studies that are starting to come out. Um, Dr. Amen uh, from the Amen Clinic, who is a brain specialist, uh, um, trying to think of another one that just talked the model health show, Dr. Uh, Sean Stevenson just talked about a new study that was coming out. So it is a continual study thing that is happening. And that's amazing. Um, but just by changing your diet, you reduce by like 40% to 50% possibly even 60, like I said, these studies are just starting to come out, your chances of developing a Alzheimer's, why not? It's a simple, just one small change at a time. And you can make the changes easily. So what's the one thing that you hope our audience takes away from this call today? Changing your lifestyle is not an all or nothing. It is just one small change at a time. Um, one thing and it just snowballs. You do one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. And eventually you're going to look back and go, oh my gracious, look at that. I don't eat like that anymore. Um, and you continue to do that because you feel better. Mm -hmm. Having a gluten allergy well, can't you have a little bit? Well, no, because I really like how I feel and I don't want to feel like anymore. And, <laughs> um, but I'm always, you know, open to certain things like sourdough. I've been told if it's prepared a certain way with certain flour, I should be able to eat it. And I'm very excited once I find it <laughs> to try it. Um, We've taken to eating. I make sourdough bread every other week. And my husband loves tortillas. And so I make tortillas from scratch and we don't use Crisco <laughs> because Crisco is just plastic. Yep. Yep. 
And it's just a small, simple change. Now, I don't have the patience to do sourdough. I don't have the room. I have a very small kitchen either, but I tried to do sourdough during the pandemic because mm -hmm. I was doing science experiments with the kids and I thought, well, let's try it. And again, I don't have the patience for that. Um, but there are bakeries and things that do do that. So just trying to find a specialized um, thing to do. So what I do is I'm working with women in groups to be able for them to have a community of women to support themselves and each other. Zoom calls so I can be in the kitchen one-on-one -on -one or group and be able to go, oh yeah, what would be a better swap? Your mayonnaise, your Hellman's mayonnaise is all gone. You're going to go to the grocery store to buy more. What would be a better swap now that you need more for you to get instead of helmets? That is the gradual one thing at a time. It can be, oh, um, I'm trying to think of something that I just did. And I'm like, you know what? There's got to be a better option than what I'm in doing. And just some research went, oh, you can learn how to make mayonnaise. It's super easy. <laughs> and, and now that they have stick blenders with a whip on the end and a mason yeah. jar yep. and egg, some olive oil, a little lemon juice. But some, some, <laughs> some people, some women don't have the time or patience for that. And that's cool. There are still better options for you to get something. Um, or do away with the mayonnaise only for special occasions, buy a smaller jar, you know, there's different things. But also I help with meal prep. How can you meal prep? So if you're working a nine to five job, and you have kids, and you have these activities, and da, 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 da. how do you meal prep so that you can put these healthy meals together? You can have a healthy lunch. Um, you have something in the morning. I intermittent fast, which you know is out there too, in the morning, and it's much later until I have something. But what can you do? How do you fix that? And it's all based on how does your body react? What does your body do? Um, and, and just being able, because you want it easy. When you're home and you're tired from a day's work or traveling or running around like the chauffeur that you might be still, you want it simple to throw together. So those are things that um, I, I help women do. So how can they get in touch with you? They wanted to reach out. So across all platforms, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, I am Melissa CrossFit Coaching at all of those. Um, you can certainly email me at Melissa CrossFit Coaching at Gmail. And I believe that's all the platforms. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll put those links in the show notes. Melissa, it's been great chatting with you today. You've been a wealth of information. I really appreciate it. Oh, and thank you for having me. I definitely am passionate because as women, we just, we know our bodies best and to become your own best health advocate is, it's empowering and we need to do that. For sure. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind the scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at the U World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com.